uh, this talk is about how how do how we have built out scalable and robust near real time machine learning models at episodes so episodes uh, deals into healthcare uh, healthcare analytics uh, and uh, i'm a part of the team into the episodes so the talk will so over uh, in this talk we'll focus on how we have built out the uh, uh, specifically for a near real time machine learning system uh, how we have built out pre computation feature pipelines and what is the ml serving platform that we have used so uh, here's a little about me before we move on. Uh, I'm a lead data engineer at Episos. And uh, so far in my career, I have worked in building out distributed data processing pipelines, machine learning systems, and setting up MLOps practices in the team. So the agenda of today's talk is that we'll start first with the challenges that we have faced in building out the, the one of the recent ML pipelines uh, for our team and for, uh, for Episos. And then we lead to that how it has led uh, with the idea of building out a pre-computation feature platform, dwelling into what ML serving platform are we using, and then ultimately going to the complete overview of the modding server, ML model server pipeline at episodes. Okay, so this, uh, this ML pipeline that we are talking about, that started when the data science team uh, uh, in, uh, at our organization came up with the problem statement of deploying transformer models. So specifically, this, uh, this talk will focus on how do we deploy the complex models. When we are saying complex models, when they introduce the transformer models, we pick up that model and deploy it into uh, uh, that time current ML serving pipeline that was like more of a real time type of uh, API systems. So we deployed that specific ML um, transformer-based ML model into our pipeline, and what we saw that we are facing high latencies. Uh, when we are saying high latencies, they were more than a couple of seconds. And if we are leading into an API type of framework, if we are having latency, uh, high latency of more than seconds, then that is where the problem is, and you can't take up to a, such a model to a production. And uh, when it comes to complex models, what an essential ingredient is that you have to use GPUs. And GPUs are really expensive. So uh, if we go to the first point, which is the high latency, suppose if I'm getting high latency, one simple solution is that I add more replicas to, uh, to my API and uh, make the system more scalable. But now when we are talking of GPUs, we cannot uh, scale to GPUs directly from say tens to hundreds just to serve more load because that will then go over budget of our whole computing load. So that was the first problem that we are seeing. We were seeing high latencies and we wanted to uh, scale up to the load, incoming load that we were getting to reach back to the uh, to reach back to the uh, serving time into milliseconds. And the next problem that came along was that these model sizes were too large, so they were into GBs. So uh, the uh, the one model that they came up with, that the size itself of the model was going up to four to five GBs. And the usual way of uh, deploying mo machine learning models into production, at least at our organization, is wrapping up into the con them into containers. So once your model is wrapped up into a container, the whole Docker image size goes up to again. Uh, a size of 10 GB. So if we are uh, talking about scaling the API replicas, so first I have to scale the GPU machine. So if you have already worked on cloud and seen that uh, if you even scale from one to two GPU machines, the time it takes for to get a GPU machine is approximately around in a range of four to five minutes. And then if your Docker container image size is going up to say 10 GBs, then the time only to bring up the whole container will again take additional three to four minutes. So it means that for me, the time to bring up one more replica was going around nine minutes. So if I, and at episodes, we always, uh, we always believe in uh, scaling up the load as per, scaling up the infrastructure as per the load itself. So we don't overscale and always have our architectures cost optimized. So uh, we have to make sure that whenever the load is coming up, first we do the calculation and then scale the instances accordingly. So over here, 
if i am seeing that to bring up one replica i will need 9 minutes then that will additionally add to the the first problem that we have which is the high latency for serving out the request and into the whole nlp engines there uh, there are multiple machine learning models that are working together to bring out the outcome so we have to make sure that we we are not losing data across the models when say a request or a data is going from one model to another and uh, the data one of the feature of the whole machine learning pipeline is that we should have the data lineage management whenever a request is going from model 1 to model 2 we should know that what was the state of the request was it success was it failure so this was uh, the last challenge that we were there we had in designing the our ml pipeline so over here the first problem is high latency for inference task so we picked up the task of going deep dive into what happens to an inference task so this is just a general overview of that whenever we have an inference task we get a data so for us since we are on aws cloud the, i have shown a, an s3 bucket for that so we get the data on an s3 bucket we pick up that data we do data pre processing and then from that we go for a feature generation load the feature uh, load the model embed the features into that model so do the input processing and then ultimately model gives out a product uh, prediction and then we upload the prediction and do post processing into an output bucket so these were the broad steps of an inference task and if you see uh, and what we notice is that the first two tasks which is the data pre processing and feature generation they both were cpu based tasks and still they were happening into a gpu based machine and they were taking approximately 30 to 40% time of the total inference task so what was the first in, uh, conclusion that we came out after deep diving into this one is that we have to remove the first two steps out from our inference task and uh, make it more of a pre step to a inference task so that gave uh, that that gave generation to the idea of the uh, creating a pre computation feature platform so over here whenever data comes up first we do the feature computation and then only embed the request to the model and then get the prediction so first let's talk about the pre computation feature platform benefits so now when we have and since like i told that we have multiple models working together to bring out the predictions on a piece of data so there there are also chances where these models are sharing few features so over there we have reduced the computational load so if you have in the last talk also we saw uh, we saw the mention of feature store so in in those feature store we are first generating all the features at once storing the, over there and then in the model we are retrieving those features as and when which model require which particular feature so it has overall reduced the computational load for each request and the resources needed and since we are removing and pre cleaning our data it has improved the accuracy at the model side yeah uh, the next benefit is that it has increased scalability because now we are reusing features across the models and not generating for every time we are predicting we are sending a prediction request to our model and uh, since we now in terms of inference time since we have now moved this whole process of generating features out of the inference task we are saving directly 30 40% inference time on that side and which means that we are actually saving 30 40% of our gpu time and gpu cost so now over here uh, we have seen that we have moved out uh, the feature the feature generation part to a feature platform the next step that comes out that what will be our ml serving platform so now since we have uh, the ho whole architecture that we look out in the end we'll see that uh, the um, yeah the latency was still coming around in uh, not uh, not like a few milliseconds but that was was still coming around 1 second or so for this complex model so we were very clear that we can't go with a real time of paradigm so at this point we were clear that we have to go for a async type of api paradigm for our ml serving platform so after performing experiments on cortex uh, open source sheldon core and aws sagemaker uh, 
we came up to a conclusion that AWS SageMaker is fitting the whole problem area that we are trying to solve. And also we believe in uh, uh, keeping our team lean. So what we, were want, what we wa wanted was that if we have a managed service so, so that we, we, our engineers spend less time on maintaining the infrastructure rather than innovating on the infrastructure side. So what we needed in our ML serving platform was that it should have support for complex heavy models and it should it should be able to uh, uh, first save the models outside even outside the container and then help us to retrieve there so sagemaker has its own sagemaker model registry where you can keep your model outside the container so now we have uh, the container size or the docker image size is not comprising of the model size which is an advantage over here tolerate high latency inferences so for this we were sure that we can't do with the real time apis Though the real-time API of SageMaker also was giving us results, but we always believe in scaling from zero to one whenever there is load and not keep the resources up whenever there is no load. So SageMaker asynchronous help us over there also. And in terms of SageMaker, SageMaker asynchronous endpoints, the way it deals with, it has its own internal queue. So you have to just invoke the asynchronous endpoint. It will first save your request and then do the inference and then save your output to an S3 bucket again. So it has its own internal queue and the way it scales out, you just have to define your own auto scaling parameters. In terms of data lineage management, there was no direct support from the SageMaker side. So we have built out our own pipeline to support the data lineage management that we'll see in, again into the next uh, slide. Scalability, reliability and security that is all guaranteed under AWS service usage. And in terms of cost optimization, with specifically with the asynchronous type of endpoints in SageMaker, you have the flexibility of going from zero to one. So suppose there is no load at this point of time, then you can keep your instances at zero and whenever there is a load. And since the star feature of asynchronous endpoints is that it has its own managed internal queue. So first, when your request will come up, it will go into, into the queue. The SageMaker, depending on however you have defined your auto scaling policies, it will bring up one GPU instance. And then your instance, uh, and then your request would be served. So now, even over here, the whole GPU provisioning time is coming around four minutes because that's how that's how the cloud. Uh, uh, yeah. So because that that's even the whole the cloud provisioning logic. But uh, over here, you have the flexibility of saving your request till the time it is not being served or inferenced. Okay, so uh, this is the complete overview of uh, ML model serving pipeline that we have built out at episodes. So we were talking of uh, the feature store and uh, building out a pre-computation uh, feature, compu pre-computation feature store platform. So over here you see that we have built out Apache, uh, we, have, we are using Kafka over there to first save the, our data event points and then compute and then consume those data event points to bring out the features from that data points and then ultimately save uh, save again the feature events to a feature uh, feature store or directly to the s3 bucket once you have the feature pre-generated we have integrated the lambda to listen to the kafka topic and then it picks up the data points from there and pings the sagemaker amazon sagemaker async endpoints and uh, with the SageMaker async endpoints, you have the flexibility of delivering your result status to SNS topics. So over here, for say you're sending an X request to endpoint A. So whenever that request is say failed, success, whatever the state of that request is, is changed, you will get a notification on a SNS topic. And from, so now for the data lineage management uh, part, you're getting all the information into that SNS topic. So we can directly consume that SNS topic and pull out the information and drop it into a database so that where machine learning engineers can directly query the database layer to know that what was the status of their request. Uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, near real time, because since nothing is happening in real time, but what we have kept is that the whole architecture is more of an event-driven architecture. So as soon as your data is uh, dropped at the event topic, the whole pipeline is triggered for that particular message. So that's why it's a near real-time architecture. Yeah. 
and in terms of data storage we are uh, the SageMaker async itself uploads your uh, inference output to an S3 bucket so that's how we are dealing with the data yeah so that's that's the complete overview of uh, how we have built out the ml serving pipeline at episodes thank you oh is that yeah. okay so <laughs> great thank you <laughs>